Oh, great. So, so thank you. Thank you for the introduction. So hello all. Um, my name is Jakub and I would like to talk about this work we have with, with Branja Boshansky and, and Bowen on modeling strategies in general extensive from games by a structure which is based on finite uh, deterministic automaton. So uh, first, let me just start with a brief description of the framework we are working with. And we represent games using a structure which is called extensive form. And the extensive form is a theoretical model of finite sequential interactions with multiple decision makers. And uh, the structure of this game can be visually represented as a tree in which each node represents a different state of the game. In every node of a game, exactly one player acts, and an edge from a node corresponds to an action that can be performed by the player who acts in this node. All actions in this model are considered deterministic so that they are always correctly executed, and we can model imperfections by stochastic nodes. Uh, we can also model limited observations of the players by grouping certain nodes together into information sets such that the player cannot distinguish between nodes which belong to the same information set. And then a strategy of a player is just mapping from, from all the information sets the, straight, the player acts in to an action which he will take in this information set. And traditionally, the, the set of pure strategies was regarded as homogeneous in a sense that we can work with all the strategies the same way. However, uh, this might not be true because strategies are not equal and they can differ based on their implementation costs. So for example, uh, consider this matrix game, which we will play in rounds as a repeated game and the following two strategies. The, the first strategy, let's call it strategy A, will always play just an action C, no matter what happens in the game. And on the, uh, on the other hand, we have the second strategy, uh, we call it B, which uses an action according to, to a round number and the last option of the opponent. And it will play C only if the opponent played C in the previous round, which should also be uh, at least fifth from the beginning, or in case the opponent played D, but there were at most four, four rounds. So otherwise the strategy will prescribe to play D. And I hope that we can all agree that the first strategy is significantly easier to, to implement and play than, than the second strategy. And this simplicity of implementation is important, especially in some real world settings, because sensors uh, for observing opponents' actions or, or the environment might be expensive, or uh, we might have limited memory, limited computational resources, and, and so on. So, uh, so the question we ask is how to model uh, complexity of a strategy? Because once we know how to do it, we can focus on easy strategies in order to both lower the requirements of finding a good strategy uh, and implementing this strategy. And we can also have better performance in systems uh, which interact with humans because humans are known to prefer some easy structured strategies. So, so in this work, uh, we propose such a model which, which enables to model complexity. And in our model, uh, a strategy is, is a structure consisting of a deterministic finite automaton and two functions. The automaton represents a structured memory of the player in which the states correspond to, to actions played by the engine and the transitions correspond to, to information which, which is gained during the game. And in order to represent the strategy compactly, we have to resign on representing actions and observations in the game explicitly. So instead, we introduce some abstract actions and abstract observations in the machine. And we use two functions, which we call the distinguishing functions to relate them to their counterparts in the original game. And this model is suitable for, for representing strategies with compressible structure, uh, such as strategies preferring card with, with highest value in, in card games, maybe some symmetric actions in, in tic-tac-toe and, and so on. And then by limiting the size of the automaton and the complexity of the distinguishing functions, 
we can also introduce into the model the bounded traditionally of, of the players. So now let me describe an example of a strategy which can be modeled using a machine. So consider a, a simplified pursuit evasion game in which two units move on an infinite grid, which you can see in the figure. And the first unit, the evader, aims to get as far from the second unit, the pursuer, while the goal of the pursuer is to catch the evader. And assume that the evader receives some information about the direction where the purser is located, then the best response of the evader naturally is, is to move in the opposite direction, right? And such a strategy can be easily modeled using a machine. So let's define four possible abstract actions to, to move up, down, left or right in the grid. And similarly, we can also define four possible abstract observations for the purser's position. Uh, we can be up, down, left, or right from the evader. And the best response machine, which we can also see in the figure, has only four states and, and 16 transitions. And in contrast, a traditional peer strategy would have to define an action in at least four for the decay information sets where k is number of steps taken by each player. So, so machine strategies hence offer uh, significantly more compact representations than than traditional strategies. So now naturally, we are interested in how to ensure a correct play using a machine and how to find optimal solutions in, in games with machines. And this is especially motivated by, by the fact that, that uh, machines provide many interesting results in the simplest class of sequential games in, in repeated games for which there is an extensive line of work on, on representing strategies using using machines. So now let's just, let's take a look on how to ensure uh, a correct play first. And as I mentioned, the, the, the machine uses abstract actions and, and observations in the game. So, so I will describe uh, what does it mean to play a game with, with abstract actions and observations correctly. So let's just say that the automaton uh, of player I is in state Q. Once the player gets the observation sigma that he's on, uh, he's on a move, uh, he will use the first, fun so the first function to, to identify uh, the transition in the automaton he should use. And in our case, it is the transition labeled by O. So he moves to the state Q prime. And according to the second function, he picks an action A in the information set I. And he plays that action, and then the game continues the same way. So this means that in order for the machine to be consistent, the player has to always select an action which can be played in the current information set. And uh, we proved that finding, finding consistent machine is a, is a polynomial problem. Moreover, uh, it is quite easy to see that for every traditional strategy, there exists a canonical machine which plays this strategy, which is basically a contract that game tree. And uh, now because, because every traditional strategy can be represented by multiple machines, uh, we introduced some, some measures of strategic complexity which should capture the player's preference over, over different machines. So for example, uh, here in the figure, you can see two machines. Uh, they both implement the same strategy but they have different structure. And then we have the irreducible machines, which are the minimal elements of the partial order, which is induced by, by the measure. And in the paper, we, we proved that there exists an algorithm which finds, uh, which finds a machine with minimal size, and it runs in polynomial time in the size of, of the game tree. So now, now using the strategic complexity measures, uh, we can find machines which represent each pure strategy the most efficiently. However, since the number of pure strategies in sequential games is exponential in the size of the game tree, the number of machines is also at, at least exponential. So, so we need to focus on some subsets on, of strategies of polynomial size, which we call small classes, and they are defined by 
some subsets of, of, oh, sorry, yeah, defined by some property of, of some structural properties of, of machines, such as perhaps an, an upper bound on a number of states. And this makes sense from the implementation perspective when we want to deploy some simple strategies, but also because in many uh, structured domains, strategies with some inner structure are, are favorable. And we show one such property, which gives rise to a small class, and it is planarity with logarithmic number of states. So now we turn to the second question, and it is the analysis of computational complexity of, of solution concepts to the equilibria. And it can be shown, in fact, that for traditional Nash equilibrium and its refinements, machines are not able to provide an efficient algorithm for computing it, even if we consider any, any class of machines. However, we're also able to prove positive results and that there are two equilibria which are NP-hard to compute in general, but using machines, we can compute them in small classes of machines in polynomial time. And these equilibria are strong Stuckelberg equilibrium, which has many applications in, in security domains, but also correlated equilibrium, which is used for coordination of, of players. And naturally, we are then interested in how strategies computed using machines perform when we want to use them to play the original game. So we implemented two algorithms which use machines directly. The first one is a regret minimization algorithm which runs regret matching on a set of machines and it computes an Nash equilibrium in, in the restriction. And the second algorithm is based on a sequence from MILP formulation for computing strong Stuckelberg equilibrium. Then for evaluating the performance of the machine algorithms, we use two domains. The first one is a compromise flip it game, which models a situation when uh, a defender aims to take back control of some partially compromised computer network. And computing Stuckelberg equilibrium in this game is, is very difficult because it is a coordination game in which the defender tries to anticipate the actions of, of the attacker. The, so the second domain then is uh, the pursuit evasion game, which I also talked about earlier, uh, in which one unit tries to evade a second unit on a rectangular grid. And because this game has a well-defined structure, it is exactly an example of a domain which is suitable for, for machines. And uh, by using machines, we are able to compute close approximations of equilibrial strategies in games with more than a billion strategies. So here in the slide, uh, we present uh, the results achieved with the machine algorithm for computing Nash equilibrium. And we compare the performance of our machine algorithm to the CFRBR algorithm uh, we opted for CFRBR because contrary to algorithms like CFR, CFR plus, CFRBR significantly decreases memory requirements. At, it is the most similar to the machine algorithm from perhaps from the whole class of algorithms based on regret minimization. And these three graphs show the exploitability on the y-axis uh, as a function of runtime. And as you can see, the machine algorithm was able to convert the strategies of a low exploitability faster than, than the CFR BR. So finally, uh, in these graphs, you can see the performance of the machine algorithm for computing strong Stuckelberg equilibrium. Uh, in this setting, we compare the algorithm to an exact branch and bound um, algorithm based on correlated equilibrium and also to its faster heuristic incremental generation version. And the sizes of different configurations of small classes of machines are depicted in the first graph. So for a flip it game with three nodes, uh, the size reaches about 10 to the minus 5% uh, of all strategies in the game. And in the second graph, we, we present uh, the median deviations from the optimal, from the optimal solution. Um, the deviation is measured as the absolute difference in the exact game value and the value of strategy computed by machine algorithm divided by the game value. And we see in the results that the machine algorithm achieves values close to optimal solutions. 
for example, for, for the flip it game with three nodes, the deviation is 0.12%. And as a percentage to check, we also generated, we generated sets of strategies randomly, and we verified that the deviations often reach error of 20 to 50%, which is significantly more than when we use when we use the sets of machines of the same size. And then the speed ups of the machine algorithm are depicted in the last graph. Uh, all configurations of all, on, on all games were significantly faster than the exact algorithm. Uh, the median value is 45 times. The configurations are also faster or comparable to the incremental generation uh, algorithm. Okay, so, so um, I guess this is everything I, I wanted to show you. So thank you for, for uh, listening. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. So.